Hey, how's it going? So today I want to talk about an app called Move Music Control. So this is an app that runs natively currently on the Quest 1 and 2. I think PC VR might be in the works, but don't quote me on it. Um, if you want to try it, just jump into the Discord server, which I'll, I'll put the old link in the um, this description down below. Uh, and you can ask the developer for access there. The guy's called Tim. He's really cool. And he seems really open to suggestions. Um, so you can think of this like a sort of virtual control surface or a MIDI controller, I guess. Um, it doesn't make any sound itself. It just relays messages to your DAW, depending on what you're doing in the app. Um, and it's really open-ended in that sense, because it's kind of like you can pretty much make it do anything, provided that that thing can be controlled by a MIDI or whatever. Um, so we're, we're definitely in early days. There's only a couple of things that you can actually kind of make in the app itself. But because you've got MIDI and you can link it to in my case, I'm using Ableton, but you could use whatever you want. Uh, you can kind of go pretty hard with it and make all sorts of mad stuff. So I'll show you a few examples of stuff that I've been messing around with. Um, and then I'll chat a little bit more afterwards about how it actually works, I suppose, uh, if you haven't kind of disappeared by then. So so we have a look. All right. <laughs> If you want to get involved in Move Music, come to the website, movemusic.xyz. Um, once you're here, you just click on this become a beta tester thing here. That will open up your emails. And then once you've kind of contacted Tim and got on, you can do this via Discord as well. Uh, and both of these links will be in the description. Uh, you'll get an email that will just explain everything you need in here. If you've used Virtual Desktop with your Quest already, it's going to work in pretty much the same way. You don't need to sort of set it up in any kind of special way. You just need to download this um, companion app. And as far as I'm aware, I've only used it on Windows, but this works for Mac OS, Windows and Linux. Once you've got that going, you're just going to, in the app, connect to your computer, which you've already hopefully done over the same Wi-Fi network that your computer's on and the quest um, and then you'll get on here it's like it's just going to listen to what what's happening so as you can see here there's a lot of midi messages that were happening from earlier um, and i'm using this loop b internal midi thing here 
which is a third party app that you can download. Uh, I'll put the link in the description again. Um, but you can use whatever third party loop looping MIDI thing that you want to use. I think on Mac, you don't even need to use that. I think there might be an internal thing that you can use. So once you've done that, um, you're pretty much good to go. So what I'll do now is I'll put the headset on and we'll take a look inside the app. All right, cool. When you first open it up, it's going to look a little bit like this. You can bring up your menu by pressing the sort of normal menu button, which is the three lines button on your left hand controller. You bring that up like that. In here, you're going to save your projects and load your projects and all that sort of jazz. Um, you've got MM Connect, which will just bring you to the connection panel and tell you about your IP address and all that sort of stuff. This all just worked automatically for me. I didn't have to mess around with that too much. It's been really solid, really happy with it. So I can turn that back off like that. Um, the only other controls you have in here is you press A to kind of make a note like this. So this, these have got a name, which is a, a hit zone, these are called in this. So this, this at the moment, I've just made this and it's, I think it's defaulted from the last note that I hit. So it's made a C sharp two. But if you wanted to make a middle C, you would just move up here and you would make a C3. So that, that now is a C3. You can't hear it because the filter's down on the synth that I'm playing, but just believe me when I say it is. Um, you can make these velocity controlled. Um, and at the moment, dynamic means that it will, if you hit it, it will send a message anywhere from naught to 100%. So in MIDI, that velocity, and I don't want to patronize you, but if you don't know, um, the MIDI message zero of velocity is basically silent and 127 is like max velocity, so the loudest you can hit. So you can, you can sort of fine tune how sensitive you want it to be. Um, it's actually a lot better than I expected. I kind of thought this is never going to work in VR, but like, I don't know if you've ever tried Paradiddle, but actually it does work quite well. Um, it's obviously not as playable as like a real drum or something, but it's not bad. And I think it's only going to get better. So you can also take dynamic off and all that will do is make it so that it's not velocity sensitive at all. So you can see that's a lot louder now, even with the cutoff down. Um, when you've got dynamic off, because that's sending a full, I think that's sending a 127 velocity, which is really loud normally, depending on what you're sending it to. So you can get rid of an object by grabbing it with your grip and pressing A like that, and then you can make the other object, which is this, which is like your control change box. And this basically works like an X, Y, Z uh, uh, controller. So basically anything on the X axis like this, um, actually I'll show you, it's gonna be better to show you on this one that I made earlier. So this is one that I made earlier, here we go. You can grab your whole surface by moving it around like this, double click your grip. Um, hopefully, I don't wanna take my headset off because every time I do it stops the recording on the headset and it makes it really hard to sync up the recording. But when I move this box around, if I move the ball around in this box, you'll see if I move it on the X, if you look at my Ableton window, that's gonna move the, the mid, because I've already MIDI assigned this um, to CC70. That's gonna move the X, that's the Y. Um, and you just gotta be careful you don't accidentally select the um, controller there. That's the Y and that's the Z like that, you see? So you need to this assign this to whatever you want it to do basically. But I've got these on channel two um, and I've just put them on 70, 71 and 72. So let's just close that. I think there needs to be a lock on this to kind of stop accidentally changing the CC, but it doesn't matter too much. So let's have a look at what I've done here. So I basically made this. This is like a sort of sloppy version of the push controller. So I've made 64 of these hit zones and I've done them in, it's a C minor scale. So if I just um, hit one of these notes, it's quite quiet, but if I bring up the cutoff by changing the X, if I go on the Y, I can change the resonance, which is quite cool, yeah. Yeah, so that's the lowest C, that's an octave up, that's the next octave up, and that's the next oct octave, blah, blah. and then this is the, the highest octave on this scale. Obviously I can change the pitch of this to whatever I want it to be, but I've set this up to be a C minor scale. So if you play it like this, that's a C minor scale, and I can change my cutoff and my resonance here. So it's really quite playable and I'm, I'm really happy with this. I have left this to be velocity sensitive. So I'm, I'm using my sustain pedal on the floor here, which is a hardware sustain pedal, just because it makes it a lot more playable. Um, and all I've done is I've, I've always had this sustain pedal plugged in for my keyboard and all I've done is bring it out here onto the floor. So it's actually going through my keyboard. It's not being interfaced through the Quest or anything weird like that. So as long as you've got a controller or an interface that allows to take a sustain pedal, you can link that up as well. So all that's happening in the DAW is not happening within this so you see how I can just if I hit a note like that it's just going to be a single note it's not going to hold if I keep my hand in there it's going to hold it but if I want to use my sustain pedal I can just tap it like that and then I can do things like this 
and then if I want to sort of clear it, I just let go of the sustain, and then I could play a different root note. So like. It's not the best sound. I just picked like a really simple operator sound here, but it is quite playable. The way this layout works is you can kind of play a triad like this. You could be like, I mean, that's not really a triad now, is it? But... Um, it's cooler, man. Like you, you could do so much with this. I mean, I only chose this layout because it was familiar to me from playing the push, but you don't, you don't need to use this layout. You can lay it out however you want. And if you bring up your information box here by pressing the X, you can see all the information in here. So that's a C, C1 and I could change that. Um, that's a C2, um, that's a C3. What would be really cool, I think, in the future would be that if I could en masse change this, like you can on a push, if I could say like C minor, uh, well, no, sorry, it's already in C minor, but let's make this a D major then. And if I could change all of these quickly, that, that would be really cool. Because um, I've had to do the, all this manually. So I've made all the root notes green and I've made all the um, the other ones purple, just like a push. So yeah, I think in the future, it'd be really cool if you could make a quick grid just by pressing a button. Like I want it in, I want it in like E diminished or something or, or a, a D Dorian and, and you could just press a button and say I want 128 pads in in this scale I think that would be super cool but yeah for now this works pretty well um, and like I say I've only set on this particular template I've only set up the X and the Y to be the um, the cutoff so and then the resonance one thing I have noticed, is the, the, the unfortunate thing, I do like the quest and I like the tracking, it's pretty good, but if obviously I look away like this and I start doing this, I think I've noticed that you lose the tracking because all the cameras are on the front as far as I'm aware. So that's one of the downsides of using this inside out tracking. You can probably, I don't know if you can see it, but I've still got my CV1 track. Um, trackers around the room and the tracking was a lot better on the CV1 but uh, I don't know the quest has a lot of plus points as well so um, yeah I've got these other ones set up as well just I've kind of made this as a template so I can quite quickly um, use these to control whatever I want them to be because uh, I don't like Ableton Live's MIDI mapping it's a bit finicky but as long as you go in the right way about it it's not too bad so I think that's kind of it really there's not really much else to show you and uh, I appreciate you watching this video and I hope to see you in, in the Discord server and, and just, just send me a message. If you've got any questions, send me a message, comment on here. I don't mind, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really into this stuff and I, I think there's a lot of potential here. I know it's a little bit geeky, but um, I think we can make some really cool stuff with this. And once we start getting body trackers and all this sort of stuff, you imagine like someone who could actually dance, like not me, obviously, uh, someone who could actually dance with a lot of trackers on them and like link to synthesizers and stuff. I mean, it could get really cool. Um, but maybe that's just me. So yeah, if you like this, let me know and yeah, I'll see you. See you around. All right. Bye.